all right then uh, let us get started um, so today we are going to be talking about uh, insights into smart vehicle security uh, moving on to uh, introduction so this is me Venkat. Uh, i'm a security researcher uh, having been working in the uh, security space for over seven years now i have uh, given talks at multiple security conferences and i also get involved in a bunch of um, scheme committees and review boards uh, especially uh, with ec council which i have been uh, uh, working with for a couple of years and yeah good to meet you all virtually uh, srini hey hi this is srini here um, i'm even a security researcher venkat and myself both our colleagues and a very good friends and um, i am like um, uh, more, much more passionate about automotive and industrial control systems i've been uh, uh, members into few of the organizations like cwa in the hardware segments and even a couple of standards uh, more often i in a day-to-day -day job i look at offensive security and do good good amount of reverse engineering thanks right so as uh, sridin mentioned so we have uh, so our areas of expertise include uh, typical web application mobile application as well as uh, network pen tests uh, along alongside we also work on uh, source code reviews uh, of product developed uh, using a bunch of i mean uh, various programming languages uh, including c c plus uh, plus java and go uh, as well so we also do a lot of uh, security research uh, in the linux kernel space uh, as well as uh, custom uh, kernel drivers that uh, uh, we get to work on and we both are pretty passionate about um, iot connected technology and smart vehicles and so on and so forth so uh, this topic is pretty close to our uh, hearts and uh, yeah this is something that we have been doing out of our passion and would love to talk more about this and so the agenda for uh, this talk is for us to understand what a smart vehicle is uh, take a quick look at the uh, various components that go into a smart vehicle solution and uh, also understand the attack surface that is open uh, uh, or unique to a smart vehicle solution and also look at uh, the various attack uh, vectors and the attack surface from an attacker's uh, perspective. So a quick disclaimer, uh, the content uh, in these slides are purely our view and we do not represent our uh, employer. And we also may uh, refer to a bunch of uh, tools and um, hardware as well as software tools and utility, uh, utilities. So we have them here as a reference uh for illustrative purposes and we do not endorse them and uh yeah moving on to the smart pair, uh, smart vehicle applications so uh this uh, image gives us a quick look at uh, what areas disconnected uh, technology caters to uh, especially smart vehicles have been uh, growing pretty significantly in the personal vehicle uh, uh, space. So there is also a lot of uh, growth in fleet vehicles or uh, robo taxis, if you will. And uh, going forward, we would also see uh, smart vehicle applications and uh, public transportations, uh, logistics and at big uh, at large events such as Olympics, for instance, as well as uh, the uh, feeder service in, at, at airports. So this just gives us a quick idea or quick look at where uh, smart vehicle solutions is headed in the upcoming uh, years. And these are a bunch of uh, acronyms that uh, I mean uh, every enthusiast needs to be familiar uh, familiar with and uh, I mean, this is something that we would be referring uh, going forward uh, in our sli upcoming slides 
and uh, I mean you can refer back to these acronyms to better understand the context uh, of uh, the content that is present in the upcoming slides. So this is what a typical smart vehicle looks like, uh, right? So smart vehicle does not essentially be an electric uh, vehicle. It can be uh, an IC engine vehicle as well with uh, certain <clears throat> certain uh, components present in it. Uh, so it, it it can have it can be uh, radar, lidars or a combination of both radars and lidars uh, in association with a um, bunch of uh, cameras uh, that could be a 360 uh, degree vision camera which uh, is basically a, a bunch of cameras uh, around the car that uh, ties the feet together to provide a 360 view of uh, the vehicle and its surroundings and uh, the uh, evaluation of smart vehicles is such that um, so this is something that uh, has been laid out by uh, SAE and uh, there typically are um, six levels of uh, autonomous drivings and uh, so we typically are uh, I mean we would be uh, at, at this point of time, uh, all the Teslas and all the ADA systems that we have on our uh, personal vehicles uh, cater towards, I mean, tend to be between uh, L2 and uh, most probably in, in, in L2, a little bit uh, pushing towards L3. And uh, so today's, uh, today's slides would be more uh, focused towards uh, uh, personal vehicles and not towards the uh, uh, other applications that we discussed in the uh, earlier slides. Moving forward, uh, this gives us a quick look at the smart vehicle architecture. So, um, I mean, these are the bare minimum uh, components that go into building a smart vehicle solution. So, uh, I mean, at the, at the uh, lowest level, we have uh, sensors and actuators. So these are the uh, uh, devices that are typically present in a smart vehicle. So sensors uh, can range between uh, range from your uh, cameras, uh, radars, uh, lidars, and ultrasonic sensors. And actuators are basically your uh, engine control units. Um, such as uh, that control your braking, steering, and uh, acceleration, basically. So this data is later. Uh, uh, this data is processed within the uh, vehicle uh, on certain onboard computers, uh, and so some data also goes back to the uh, uh, backend cloud infrastructure uh, for um, more complex uh, computation. Uh, I mean, considering that uh, the limited compute power on an onboard uh, vehicle computer, uh, the complex calculations and computations uh, tend to happen in the uh, uh, much beefier uh, cloud infrastructure. And that data transfer happens uh, over telematic. So, uh, so when we move to communication, uh, there are uh, two types of communications here, right? So one is your uh, in-vehicle communication and the other one is uh, telematics, which include your uh, cellular and satellite uh, communication that transfers the data back and forth between uh, the vehicle and uh, the backend, uh, uh, backend servers. So we would be looking at, uh, we'd be diving deep into these uh, components in the upcoming slide. Looking at the components, it's very familiar that uh, most of the smart vehicles involve all of these, right? So a smart vehicle which has got sensors, which has got communication interfaces, which have inbuilt devices are together working and they generate lots of uh, data. So they requires also storage and uh, they also store lots of um, security related data, user related data, sensor related data. And sensors which help the automotive smart are like um, LIDAR, cameras, and uh, lot many uh, sensors which are there within the 
automotive um, connected uh, ECUs, right? So um, when we look at communication interfaces, as Venkat was just describing, there are interfaces that are internally connected and there are also interfaces that are externally connected. When I say it is internal, there are low range or connected over a bus, right? Uh, within a short range, you can assume it as Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and within the bus, internal bus, you can look at CAN, LIN, MOST, and few others. When, when we exactly look at what are the external interfaces that uh, any of the automotive vehicle would be uh, connecting to, um, there are entertainment units that allow um, the uh, NFCs, Wi-Fi, and the telematics, which exactly plays a very good role in carrying out the data and controlling the car over a cellular network. And the GPS and the satellites are the one that helps you to track, right? You also have short range communications, which, which allows you to um, look at the distributed technologies like V2X, V2I, V2V and all that. Above all, uh, all this data uh, are carried away uh, over to the uh, network, to the cloud. And uh, it's, it's also a weapon that is given to a user um, using a smartphone who is able to control and who is able to monitor and who is able to uh, diagnose the car, right? That's over a smartphone. This is, this is all about the components that are totally equipped into a single car, which enables it to be smart. Next slide, please. We just saw each of this component, but this particular slide that we are currently looking at, you can look at me who is there in the left bottom, who is hand holding a mobile phone with an app operating a car. And there are multiple protocols that are already inside the car, which are actively running, exchanging lots of information. Right. So the Bluetooth, for example, is connected to my mobile phone and I, I'll be able to monitor or give commands to the vehicle and continuously know what exactly is happening with my vehicle status. Parallelly, there are telematics module that actually connect to the cellular network and communicate to the cloud um, infrastructure by pushing out data and giving the status or getting the remote updates via the cellular network. Parallelly, there are also other means where it communicates to vehicle to vehicle or vehicle to pedestrian, pedestrian or any infrastructure or the grid or V2X. So there are n number of possible ways that in today's world, the smart car is doing. So it's a live example where you can see lots of sensors, lots of data. Parallelly, there is lots of opportunity to look at insecurity space, right? Every every uh, uh, data flow that we are currently looking at here are spaces where there are insecurities applicable. So there are lots of improvements, lots of security angles that has to be posed and has to be validated for each one of these um, channels. Next slide, please. Looking at a uh, few current examples or current news, you can re recently look at uh, the previous month saying that uh, there are chips that are already vulnerable, like 16 different vulnerabilities have been identified in a chip, which are popularly used in automotive industry, right? And there are <clears throat> hackers uh, in place who actually connect, uh, who has actually connected to the infotainment unit and was able to uh, steal some data, right? Uh, likewise, in October, there are similar like chip vulnerabilities that have been identified or the uh, Android One automotive operating system where there are a few critical vulnerabilities that have been identified. And um, there is also a source code leakage uh, that was also identified uh, by a major uh, German OEM guy. Likewise, there are n number of examples, and uh, which is uh, to the to the latest, we can also say that there are EV home charger stations which are connected over a Wi-Fi have been also prone to uh, be vulnerable, right? 
So likewise, we see lots and lots of vulnerabilities coming up every day, every day. And it is a new chance for us to understand different segments of the communication, different segments of the information that we, go, go, we can go ahead and validate and see lots of issues. So the coming slides will give you um, what we exactly have observed in the latest uh, automotive models. Let us go ahead. Next slide, please. Coming back to basics, this is very common for any domain that we are looking at. CIA are the pillars that you definitely have to consider for each and every uh, security aspects that you're going to design for your product, right? So confidentiality, it's definitely, you have to keep your information secret. Integrity, it's, it's very well known by multiple ways that you have to maintain integrity, ensure none of the data, none of the firmware, none of the uh, commands are modified by unauthorized uh, adversaries. Staying and available is also a critical component. Likewise, it keeps um, security in space, right? So ensure it is available for your customers. It is available for the normal users. Unlike a user who wants to get into a car, unable to get into, uh, get into a car would be a miserable situation. So it's equally important to understand what different ways that you can think of to um, validate CIA across the product and uh, classify all the attack scenarios and go ahead and validate those attack scenarios. Next slide, please. In general, when we look at uh, attack vectors, what different ways an attack uh, can happen, right? When we look at a, a, a smart automotive vehicle, these, these technologies allow you to connect physically. These uh, technologies allow you to connect as a local network. And the technologies which are part of the automotive also allow you to connect over a remote, right? There is a lot of information exchange happening within the vehicle uh, or in a short range communications or remote communications. So we can clearly assume that all these three are the attack vectors that anyone can leverage and do nasty things. Let us go a little bit deep down to understand what different techniques <clears throat> can an attacker uh, use by um, uh, things like this, like someone who is trying to, someone who is trying to, um, uh, get access as a local, uh, uh, sorry, as a physical, he, he can immediately get into your debug interfaces. Any hardware that, that openly gives access to debug interfaces, boom. The physical guy who will be able to connect to the car will be able to control the car by tampering lots of uh, functionalities. Will be able to override the firmware, will be able to write unwanted data right? The USB connectors, which allow us to connect lots of um, data transfer will also, is also an entry point for any of the person, any of the attacker to push um, data, right? And um, there are numerous serial interfaces on the hardwares that are, that are lying around the automotive um, uh, embedded boards. And those can also be a pathway to read the ROM memory or write some data onto the bus, right? Diagnostics, yes. Um, every, every vehicle that goes to a workshop uh, undergoes a diagnostic check and those diagnostic interfaces will allow you to understand um, the requirements of the vehicle and further any of the attacker who understands the vehicle thoroughly, the IDs that are observed via diagnostics will be able to push lots of data and can cause miserable damage, right? Legacy hardware, yeah, there are legacy hardwares which are um, not um, supporting secure boot, not uh, supporting secure memory, not supporting any of the encryption uh, technologies that are currently used. So such, such things are very easy for anyone to understand and tap in for lots of secretive information. 
supply chain in today's world we see a lot of supply chain vulnerabilities coming up and this is also an important factor that anyone can dig in and get lots of sensitive data or damage the reputation likewise we can go ahead for platform where platform is the platform is actually the operating system the firmware the remote update that the the, the vehicle uh, actually requests and gets updated or uh, the boot cycle or any process which is running the number of accounts that the operating system has memory layout the middleware um, which actually talks to the actual um, uh, user space and the kernel space and virtualization technologies that are part of the platform most of this uh, in today's world are insecure as you saw uh, in the uh, recent news list people have targeted this um, platform and started impacting the product communication uh, this is an wonderful interface that anyone would like to tap in understanding various technologies like bluetooth wifi radio frequency zigbee cellular networks and uh, most of the protocols like can lin and few others uh, people will be able to uh, simply tap into the network and uh, query enumerate and exploit lots of uh, services going back to the software software are softwares are the uh, one that enables uh, lots of uh, application innovation and lots of technologies to be embedded onto the board so likewise any software that is built is built with third party libraries the protocol functionalities and uh, by default onboard for applications or the apis that are being used which is um, supposed to connect to the vehicle and the remote uh, um, cloud interface and the configurations that are part of the software and cryptographic services and the functions so there there are various vulnerabilities that are lying around in each one of them will be very much interested for anyone to attack and uh, take control or cause any of the uh, vulnerabilities to the automotive space next next slide please right so yeah uh, so that really painted a good picture of uh, what we have to be looking at from uh, nataka's uh, point of view at uh, uh, smart vehicle solution so the reason why uh, we need to uh, when we need this talk is to uh, look at the uh, various components and various attack surface and uh, certain uh, attack vectors that have been introduced uh, uh, I mean, after uh, I mean, when we get into the smart vehicle uh, kind of a scenario, so uh, the primary, uh, the other uh, reason is so we at, at this point of time we do not have uh, a, a lot of standards, security standards uh, that are uh, at a mature level, right, which can be uh, adapted by. Uh, uh, the automotive manufacturers as well as uh, the part suppliers. So due to the lack of um, such maturity and since the uh, technology itself is uh, still at uh, the infancy state, uh, I mean, we need to be extra cautious and uh, in terms of uh, locking down uh, I mean, at least the attack surface uh, that we are looking at uh, in, in this particular slide. So as we were discussing about the device hardware, um, device hardware is most prominent area where anyone uh, having physical access to the vehicle should be able to get into the machine. Now, looking at various common entry points, um, as a attacker, anyone would look at few interfaces that might give access to the complete system. Now, when we say, what is complete system? Interfaces like JTAG, serial interfaces like UART, or CAN interfaces, which is uh, CAN um, OBD, and uh, USB interfaces, which, which can uh, internally convert for any of the Ethernet or any TTY shell. 
that actually gives you um, access to the board. And these interfaces uh, would lead you to get a console access, will help you to disrupt or access the local memory and configurations that are part of the board. So uh, many vulnerable services and uh, missing security patches would help you to get into the system. And uh, you can do lots of um, uh, unwanted firmware update and um, you can disable the security features and uh, tamper the sensor values and whatnot. Push your own firmware, right? So many things that you can like, exactly achieve. Um, so there, are, there is one such um, example that you can look at where the OBD2 interface, which is part of the vehicle, uh, which you can fetch at the bottom of your feed, um, you can strictly uh, connect to the OBD vehicle and um, get access to the uh, machine, the car, right? So uh, what exactly happens if someone uh, gets connected to the root shell? Right, so UART and few other USB related interfaces where uh, there is anyone who has connected to uh, those interfaces. It gives you access to the boot uh, boot shell and um, that's because um, it's, it's insecure. And uh, if though, even though it's secure, there are few glitch attacks that will, that will allow you to uh, get access to the shell and um, get um, you can fetch for lots of um, secrets like the keys or the passwords in the configuration files by fetching into the NVRAM or uh, EPROM from the same UART uh, interface. And um, yes, you can go ahead and do uh, many activities there, right? And telematics is also one such uh, area that um, anyone can dig in and uh, simply get access to lots of um, API calls or the SMS services or the internet connectivity related information. Yeah, next slide, please. Um, this, this has been savior for most of us. <clears throat> there are logic analyzers like here. Uh, we can simply attach the probes to the chip and start analyzing the data. So what exactly we have done is we uh, attach this uh, logic analysis to the CAN interfaces. And on to the next slide, you can clearly understand, look at the CAN pulses, like what data have been exchanged between ECUs, between the head unit and uh, ECUs. And uh, these pulses will give you lots of information, the patterns that you can literally observe. And uh, those, those can be replayed it can be tampered and you can literally understand what are the outcomes of uh, such malicious um, um, uh, can, can information or can IDs and can data that you can spoof and send back to the vehicle. Next slide, please. Um, more often, we, we are very much um, acquainted to use BeagleBone with a CAN controller. And there are a couple of uh, Linux tools like uh, um, CAN bus and a um, few, few other tools, uh, which will allow you to sniff, CAN sniff and a few other tools, which will allow you to sniff uh, the exact CAN data within the in-vehicle network. And you can literally look at the output where 305, 1A4, 1AA are the identifiers of each of the um, uh, ECU IDs and corresponding 8-bit data that is there here, like 8035 or 0002F or 7FFF. These are the hex representation of the data that's that's been spoken amongst the ECUs. And um, these data carry the actual values of the sensors or the attached, uh, um, uh, like for example, if you wanted to tamper the tachometer, uh, you can literally hit the, identify the right ID, like 166, for example, and give uh, the value in the uh, data. And the data will be pushed over the CAN interface. And you can see that the tachometer actually uh, shows the exact value, whichever you wanted to show. So you can literally observe, though you are stable, you can literally see this, there's a change in the tachometer value. Next slide, please. 
Um, so this is one such output that you can uh, look at for anyone who is convert connecting to the UART interfaces will be able to see a console like this and lots of options which will uh, enable you to monitor, uh, push data and all that. Um, looking at the firmware, firmware is a critical component because firmware has got all the IPs part of the automotive system. And firmware is one such area, anyone who would like to understand the whole uh, behavior of the functionality should be able to analyze the firmware. So how do we get this firmware? And how do we start and looking at the internal implementation of the software that is written on this firmware? So we can use many extraction methodologies like bus pirate, Shikra, uh, connect to the uh, chips that are part of the automotive head units or entertainment units and uh, pull down uh, the firmware, extract the firmware from the chip and um, the bin file that you would have been extracting can be reverse engineered using bin walk or lot many tools like uh, many open source tools that converts the binary file to a readable format with exact um, uh, file system as in Linux. And that gives you a, um, lots of information where you can go ahead and dig deep down to sensitive information like passwords, keys, the uh, SSL keys, or the APIs that, uh, that are helpful for anyone to go ahead and connect to the cloud or any of the sensitive information like SMS and whatnot. So what exactly you can look in firmware, right? You can look at the encryption technologies that is customly made for this particular device, right? And you can also look at lots of hardcore credentials, right? So um, in today's world, due to lack of the hardware cap capability, uh, developers put a lot of hardcore credentials. They don't have remote connectivity for randomly changing or validating the interface credentials. So it is preferred to put a hardcore credentials and that is something that will be very much interested for us, right? And there are numerous of backdoors that you can observe in the firmware, which will help you to uh, remotely connect or debug the same firmware that, um, that will allow you to extract lots and lots of data. Um, sensitive information, URL endpoints, or you can, uh, you can um, uh, rebuild the firmware and see if you can downgrade the firmware version and extract any of the security functionalities and uh, uh, push the firmware back to the device and you can start playing with. Um, likewise, um, there is lots of um, uh, techniques that we can use and play with the firmware. Next slide, please. Great. So uh, building on to what Srini just explained uh, from firmware, right? So um, firmware updates and software updates play a key role in uh, uh, adding new features and uh, also applying security patches in a smart vehicle. So uh, in, in a smart vehicle, this plays a, a critical role uh, just because uh, the lifetime of the vehicle and the is directly dependent on the uh, security patches that we receive right so if the vehicle is no longer supported by the uh, manufacturer or if a certain component that is uh, placed within the uh, automotive right is uh, not supported anymore uh, that leaves the uh, vehicle uh, highly susceptible to security attacks so since a software update is a major uh, attack surface uh, in its own in, an, in a smart vehicle solution so this this provides an attacker a substantial uh, surface to uh, uh, attempt to perform malicious activities so how how can an attacker uh, compromise uh, system this way is by uh, first of all uh, looking so this can be achieved in uh, multiple ways uh, one is to try to capture uh, the firmware that is being sent uh, 
uh, firmware or software that is being uh, sent over the air to the vehicle so uh, if an attacker is able to capture that and if the firmware is uh, uh, transmitted in uh, in an unencrypted for, uh, fashion then uh, so again we can go back to what we discussed earlier in terms of uh, uh, dissecting the firmware uh, extracting uh, the contents of the firmware and looking for uh, vulnerabilities and uh, sensitive information embedded within the firmware the uh, other way to get hold of a firmware is uh, there are uh, still certain uh, certain uh, uh, software manufacturers that push updates to uh, components in a way that requires the uh, firmware to be downloaded onto onto a, a laptop or onto a mobile phone depending on the component that is in uh, i mean that we are referring to and later the uh, firmware is uh, flashed onto the uh, actual embedded device so this could also be uh, a firmware being downloaded onto the onboard uh, storage um, for instance an ivi and which is later uh, then installed onto the uh, embedded device so these are certain areas that uh, can provide the attacker with uh, the firmware and uh, in addition to it there are uh, other logical uh, logic issues that could creep up right uh, most of which uh, so some of which uh, be, being uh, rollback prevention so uh, so there are uh, i mean there are there have been cases right where uh, uh, an attacker is able to uh, use a firmware which is uh, rightly signed and uh, actually originated from the uh, oem but which is known to have a certain vulnerability uh, even though the uh, company has went ahead and released an update uh, with uh, mitigations uh, properly in place an attacker um, could be able to uh, go ahead and roll back the firmware uh, or the software to a the, uh, vulnerable version which would uh, leave the uh, vehicle um, vulnerable to attacks and uh, i mean if if the if such a rollback can be performed uh, on a fleet of vehicles then that would substantially increase the uh, risk of uh, the passengers or the consumers uh, using the uh, vehicles uh, so a quick example of this is uh, the jeep attack right so this is where uh, uh, this is where smart wheel, uh, smart vehicle security uh, received uh, the traction that it uh, required and um, so one of the attacks that the uh, initial security researchers uh, uh, leveraged in the jeep hack was to update the firmware uh, via the head unit uh, leveraging the usb port so uh, back then the firmware was not uh, signed properly by the uh, manufacturer or the software provider so uh, the uh, researchers were able to uh, modify the firmware and flash it back to the uh, embedded system um, so by and large uh, this vulnerability has been uh, mitigated and uh, this has been introduced as a best practice and a lot of uh, manufacturers and a lot of uh, developers follow this uh, uh, so follow this recommendation however there are still um, certain oems and certain uh, suppliers uh, who do not adhere to this uh, recommendation or uh, to, to this uh, best practice or this could be uh, a negligence or uh, or a gap from the uh, developer uh, side right so right. Uh, yeah. as you rightly said as you rightly said Venkat, uh, like we we were looking at um, um, lots of integrity things right now it was not like earlier now there are certificates that are used to ensure that the uh, integrity checks are in place and the binaries are properly signed uh, but to our observation i could uh, literally say, say that uh, vulnerabilities like toc tou are prominent um, uh, and those can be easily identified uh, while there is a software update mecha mechanism which is happening um, in, in, within the vehicle, right? Yes, Srini. 
so yeah uh, this is something that uh, the architects need to uh, pay a I mean special attention uh, towards the update mechanism and not limited uh, so uh, not just uh, the I mean if the firmware is um, signed that doesn't uh, mean that there is nothing that can go wrong there are other a bunch of other uh, issues that could creep up uh, like what we discussed earlier uh, so we need to take uh, extra care uh, in this area and moving on to device memory and local storage uh, so uh, considering the uh, limited uh, storage that is available uh, on board in, in a vehicle uh, there may be uh, multiple components depending on uh, a single storage uh, right and uh, so the onboard storage uh, could store a lot of uh, sensitive information including uh, PII uh, vehicle information uh, and also uh, data similar I mean sensor data could also be stored uh, online for a certain period of time uh, so th this is something that has to be taken care of uh, in, in terms of uh, so the data at rest should be proper adequately uh, encrypted and should also be uh, cleared in a timely fashion so that uh, I mean any malicious actor is not able to connect to this uh, vehicle and steal such sensitive information so an example of such an attack is uh, cars blues uh, so this is an attack that uh, this is a, a vulnerability that was uh, discovered by privacy for cars uh, back in 2018 and what happens in this particular scenario is that uh, so uh, when when we connect our mobile phones uh, to the uh, vehicle uh, over Bluetooth so uh, the data gets synced right and uh, uh, apparently the onboard storage uh, holds this data such as our contacts call logs uh, and messages uh, as well uh, in, in clear text and uh, so in, in a scenario where uh, the car is a borrowed or a rented vehicle uh, once the uh, user returns the vehicle right so an attacker could connect back to the uh, uh, IVI and uh, extract the uh, personal uh, identifiable information such as their contacts and so on and so forth uh, with with uh, I mean this does not this attack does not require uh, uh, unique skills or uh, complex hardware and software uh, this could be easily uh, extracted from the uh, onboard storage with traditional methods so uh, moving on to operating system and kernel uh, so this is also uh, 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 an attack surface uh, considering a smart vehicle solution uh, although this is uh, traditional uh, I mean traditionally uh, security researchers do spend a lot of time and uh, the uh, looking for vulnerabilities in kernel as well as uh, the operating systems uh, a special uh, call out is required in such a scenario uh, because uh, I mean, considering the uh, limited memory that is available on, a, on an embedded device, right, uh, that goes into uh, a smart vehicle, uh, oftentimes the operating system or uh, that runs on such a device uh, is not, uh, does not have uh, security mitigation techniques uh, that are available in uh, uh, more mature operating systems. Uh, such as your ASLR and uh, DEP uh, for instance and uh, extra care needs to be uh, taken to address uh, overflow and overrun conditions uh, on on services running on uh, embedded devices so mm, so yeah uh, because the this technology is still uh, growing and not at a mature state uh, we need to take additional care in terms of addressing uh, uh, such issues as well and constantly perform um, syscall fuzzing on uh, the kernels that are being used and uh, take extra care to uh, have the appropriate security patches uh, updated as well Uh, yeah, as we we have been discussing on the communications, um, there are shortage communication, long, long range communications. 
um, familiar things are like Bluetooth, Zigbee, and we have been noticing lots of vulnerabilities in Bluetooth space, Wi-Fi, and uh, upcoming, there might lots of vulnerabilities coming in the, the uh, short range communications. And if you look at telematics, telematics enable uh, any of the automotive space to connect it to the external world, and uh, which is built using a cellular interface, uh, which communicates with um, GPS and also satellite. So there, there are these are very common that you can look at, but overall you can see uh, diagnostics or uh, lots of uh, Wi-Fi, lots of information that's been flowing through all these interfaces based on their requirements, based on the hardware capability that you can literally connect to the ECUs. Uh, next, next slide, please. When we look at uh, uh, hardware communications, uh, sorry, network communications, every communication network uh, are different. And so there are uh, different hardwares associated to it. For radio frequency communications like um, uh, RF, which is ranging to uh, like, which are ranging like um, 915 or uh, uh, many other uh, 443 and all that megahertz. Uh, we use tools like HackRF, uh, which is a very uh, easy tool uh, that can allow you to um, tap into the radio network and understand the pattern of the uh, uh, data that is flowing from one RF device to another RF device and understand and replay back by modifying the content. Like there are examples where we have been noticing um, like the uh, keyless, um, uh, uh, keyless um, key fobs, uh, where without the key fob, the attacker will be able to send the command and the vehicle reacts to it, opens the door, right? So such scenarios are um, easily tappable and replayed using HackRF. And Ubertooth uh, is a device which will help you to uh, listen to Bluetooth communications ranging from uh, 2.0 to 4.0, 4.2. And uh, you should be able to understand the security mechanisms, understand what data is being flowing, how is uh, uh, authentication implemented, what sensitive data is flowing, and you should be able to modify and replay it back as well. Uh, likewise, the Wi-Fi device, um, which is within the network, local network, uh, where you can connect to an alpha wireless card or a Wi-Fi pineapple to um, spoof and fool the Wi-Fi device that is part of the vehicle, which acts as a client or a master. There are parallel uh, softwares that you can use, uh, which can tap in to the uh, which, which can add up to the hardware and look into very interesting traffic like Wireshark, can dump which can look into the can traffic and EtherCap are uh, very good EtherCap is a very good tool that you can do a MITM for Bluetooth and uh, Wi-Fi both as well GNU radio is again used by HackRF um, these tools uh, actually help you to reveal um, unencrypted traffic uh, sensitive information like keys, the encryption methodologies, how, what is the length of the key, what is the next sequence of the key, uh, if the key is constantly rotating, uh, performing a jamming and uh, understand the data flow. You can also try and see if you can really go ahead and hit the functionalities of the protocol implementation that is part of the chip by performing protocol fuzzing. And there are many replay attacks um, you, you would have seen on the third slide, the lots of news, where are possibilities of replay attacks of the traffic and people steal the car. <laughs> Funny, right? So uh, just a replay attack, which, which the attacker uses small devices to tap into the uh, traffic pattern. And when the owner is not nearby, they just replay and gain lots of um, uh, value by stealing a car. Likewise, yeah, 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 you. right. In in addition to it, uh, there have also been uh, multiple scenarios where uh, the 
uh, onboard uh, hotspot uh, Wi-Fi connections that an automotive uh, a vehicle uh, provides, right? So they, they tend to have uh, default uh, Wi-Fi passwords, uh, typically ranging, I mean, typically being one, two, three, four, five, six, or there they may be um, logic, uh, business logic that sets the password to, a, uh, I mean, in relation to a certain timestamp. Uh, so these are uh, some weaknesses that can also be exploited uh, by a skilled uh, attacker to uh, connect to the vehicle and once uh, the attacker is connected to the vehicle there is uh, a lot of disruption that can be uh, performed. So that uh, also uh, is something that we need to take care uh, in, in this attack surface. Right. Good thing you can literally look at is uh, assume you would have got a vulnerability in one of the model, right? This can be replicated to n number of units. <laughs> so if if an attacker is successfully stealing a car, one particular model, he can steal the same model of different different cars. So um, the the updation of hardware is difficult. It requires a call off of the vehicle that's very costly, and people don't do so. And the remote updates uh, are again very uh, cost and um, it is not proven so easy. So there are many challenges and uh, those challenges for developers are the success successful uh, methods for the hackers, right? Next slide. So this, this image is part of the uh, GSM traffic that anyone can look at. Uh, we have used um, USRP and HackerOne to understand uh, what is a communication that is happening from the telematics to the cloud and what different uh, information is passing by over a Faraday cage. And this is just a sample that we have just uh, put up here. Next slide, please. Yeah. And uh, deep packet inspection is uh, highly required in terms of uh, uh, preparing for a replay attack or uh, another thing, uh, certain uh, unencrypted traffic, right? So that is something that we need right. to uh, look at as well. So yeah, moving on to uh, the application side of things. So this is something that, uh, I mean, researchers have been working a lot on <laughs> web, web applications and mobile applications. So uh, they still uh, pose a, I mean, they still are an attack surface. Uh, even in a connected technology or in a smart vehicle solution uh, kind of a scenario uh, be because there are still a, a bunch of uh, uh, services that are opened up or that can be accessed uh, via a, a web application or a mobile application equally and still be able to remotely control a vehicle. So the typical tools that we require uh, for I mean, to do uh, to find vulnerabilities in this area are a bunch of a proxy, uh, proxy software like a bug suite, uh, vulnerability scanners, um, REST, uh, REST or Postman client uh, to interact with uh, the uh, REST APIs and uh, depending on the uh, application that we have we may also require a rooted Android device or a jailbroken iOS device to uh, better control the uh, uh, on, on onboard storage uh, of the device and also tamper with the traffic which is going back and forth and uh, the typical uh, things to look for is uh, for default uh, default credentials uh, also look for an unencrypted uh, communication uh, look for ways to bypass uh, uh, business logics so this can be uh, i mean they, they so once we reverse engineer a mobile application there may be um, certain uh, snippets of uh, the business logic uh, uh, which, which can be reverse engineered to uh, uh, bypass certain uh, server side logic as well. So we would be looking at um, a quick example of uh, one such thing. Uh, so this is uh, a my this is a my car mobile application, uh, which uh, I mean by reverse engineering the Android application, uh, you could easily find the uh, admin credentials, right, uh, which is present in clear text uh, in the 
uh, in in the client side uh, mobile app so this is something that uh, is pretty common uh, with with uh, the mobile applications that uh, still uh, is able to control a, a major portion of the uh, vehicle and moving on to cloud infrastructure so cloud uh, as we discussed earlier um, uh, does a lot of uh, heavy lifting uh, so the major uh, computation and uh, all the complex uh, computation happens in the backend server uh, in addition to it this is where uh, con uh, continuous learning and uh, the model uh, enhancement happens so keeping um, such uh, infrastructure safe is pivotal and uh, with with increasing uh, players in the automotive space uh, and with with increasing suppliers uh, i mean we need to be uh, extra careful in terms of uh, vetting the uh, back end service uh, back end servers uh, to to ensure they have been adequately uh, uh, they they have been they are adequately secure from a physical security standpoint as well as uh, uh, a cyber um, security standpoint um, and also uh, have all the typical uh, cloud security uh, audits uh, happening in a timely manner so moving on to a uh, code review so uh, like uh, so historically it has been proven right the code code review is the best way to uh, or the best approach to identify uh, uh, security vulnerabilities uh, and uh, this still stays uh, true for uh, a security uh, for, a, for a smart vehicle solution as well and uh, so the primary primary things that uh, have to be looked at are um, we need to ensure that there are no hard-coded credentials uh, in the code that is being released uh, as well as look for uh, hard-coded cryptographic secrets and also look for um, any unobfuscated um, uh, code or logic that could uh, reveal uh, cryptographic uh, algorithms that are being used and so on and so forth and uh, yeah these are something that uh, needs to be uh, addressed before uh, releasing a um, uh, software yeah i'll go pretty go pretty much quick uh, looking at the current standards standards are evolving day by day and uh, we can literally see that uh, the automotive standards like iso 26262 and um, the 402 or octave or tara or uh, TS, um, TC204, or a few other standards. Uh, mainly they are lying around um, the uh, engineering process of the STLC and uh, risk-based security and safety standards that are part of it. So they take care of the process, uh, ensuring that each and every component or each and every phase of the development stage, uh, security is in place and it is actively used. So these standards prominently play a role of ensuring that security is part of their uh, life cycle uh, for um, the complete uh, product engagements. So um, understanding that functionality safety is uh, very, very important. Um, these standards will allow you to ensure there is to the max functional safety is being considered, right? Um, yeah. Right. So, yeah, uh, we would like to conclude this talk, uh, I mean, emphasizing that security is not a step, uh, but it is a process. And uh, uh, I mean, this, uh, this is even more uh, critical in a smart vehicle uh, because this uh, directly, I mean, the lack of security patch, patches uh, would directly impact the consumer uh, driving the vehicle. So the lifetime of uh, the vehicle is directly dependent on the long-term uh, support of uh, the components that go into a smart vehicle solution. And uh, since we already uh, discussed that security standards are still uh, not at a mature state for uh, smart vehicles, uh, until a point when uh, where 
uh, we have um, I mean, pretty well defined security standards uh, we, we need to uh, keep pushing updates we need to keep looking for uh, vulnerabilities and fixing them proactively as well as uh, reactively fix the uh, issues that have been reported by uh, security researchers uh, who who disclose them uh, ethically right so this is something that uh, we need to uh, uh, take extra care so this is a fun thing after listening to the whole uh, security aspects of automotive uh, you can see that uh, a person who has uh, lots of sensors put down on his body rather than clothes uh, there is a lot of data being exchanged likewise the automotive is also the same has got numerous sensors uh, numerous data points and lots of data that's been floating around in within the vehicle and outside so it's equally important uh, to see how it transforms uh, now that we are hearing v2i v2x v2v lots of data is there uh, in and around so yeah uh, good thing to discuss such fun topics thank you sure yeah thank you all uh, if you have any uh, follow up questions or something you can uh, feel free to reach us on linkedin so that we can uh, discuss it further over there thank you thanks okay. thanks a lot besides for giving us this opportunity have a great evening yeah thank you